And before we start, we want to create a small risk disclaimer for you guys. So the information provided in this webinar is for educational purpose only and should not be considered as a financial advice. The content presented in this webinar is based on the information believed to be relevant, but not guaranteed is made as to its accuracy or completeness. Pure Prime and I shall not be held liable for any losses, damages, or expenses incurred as a result of the use of the information provided. Trading investment in financial markets involves high risk of a high level of risk and it's possible to lose all of your investor capital. Before making any investment decisions, it's important to carefully consider your financial situations, investment objective, and risk tolerance. All trading and investment decisions are solely your responsibility. Participants should be aware of the risk involved and only trades or invest funds that can be afforded to lose. So this is our small risk disclaimer and without wasting any time, we are going to start our webinar right now. So the first thing that the topics that we are going to discuss on should be on the top five uh, trading strategy. So in this top five trading strategy, we will discuss of, about scalping. Like what is scalping? One of the famous tools that a lot of traders like to use. Normally the full-time traders like to use the scalping. Then we also discuss about the day trading strategy. What is the day trading strategy? How can we uh, utilize it? How can we benefit from it? And then we also discuss on the swing trading and position trading. We will try to compare all of these different kind of trading strategy and then you uh, for it four different kind of trading strategy and then you can try to pick the best strategy that's suitable to you. And then we also discuss about the divergence. Divergence is uh, one of the goods I uh, cannot say trading strategy is one of the good trading indicators. So the divergent is formed. What are you going to do? And then what is divergent, which is the most important? Divergent is also one of the very important trading indicators that global traders need to be understanding of. So the first thing that we are going to discuss today is scalping, which is quite suitable for the uh, full-time trader estimation. Full-time traders, they like to do the scalping, they try to predict what is the next market movement and how did you buy or sell? But the question remains on what is scalping. So scalping is quite simple. It's just like trading small price change in the markets. It's a very, very short term trading. Time frames they are going to use normally one to five minute charts. They just open for a few minutes or a few seconds, then they decide to close it. So one of the example is you can notice that if you are going to open for MT4, this is MT4, or if MT5, the tools are still similar one. So normally this is the time frames that you can be focused on it. Here is the time frames. M1 means one minute. If you forgot what is it, you can just put your mouse around the corner, then you can notice that one minute is M1, then maybe H4 is four hours charts. So normally for scalping, people will just use uh, M5 or maybe M1 to do the trades. And then how they do the trades, a few trading strategy is, Maybe some of them might be draw. Maybe let me see any sideway. Normally for scalping, it's advisable for you to focus on sideway instead of the long-term trends going up or going down. If sideways, then you are not sure what to trade. Maybe you can try uh, to consider on the scalping strategy. Let me see if we do have any good example of sideway movement. As for now, as a comparison, maybe sideways should be on HK50. But I try to pick something easier. Okay, which is the NASDAQ. So if you are going to open on NASDAQ, like previous one here. So let me see any sideways. Okay, so you can notice that this is the previous one. And then normally trader will try to draw a very short term support and resistance level around this corner. And then they, of course, they will also try to put like M, uh, MA line. MA line is how you set it in the MT4. It's like you just say, click here, insert, and then you just use indicator, custom, sorry, indicator trends, and then you can notice that here is the moving average. So after you set the moving average, you can set the period 60, then you put it green color, then you change to 20, a short term line, then you put into the red color, any color you want. But what is the most important thing is you need to set the periods nicer. So one is short-term periods, one is long-term periods. Uh, this periods means that uh, maybe if you set 60 periods, means a longer term. It, uh, it will include the 60 candlestick of the average prices. 
So if you put 20, it means it will utilize 20 candlestick for the average prices. To explain in the layman's terms, the shorter the periods is mostly focused on the short term uh, movement, market movement. The longer the periods mean longer term periods. So one is 20, a very short term, another is 60. So after you click and you set it, you can notice you do have the two line over here already. One is the red line, one is the green line. So normally if scalping, they will use a few trading strategy. First is after this few line have been formed, the, the MA line have been formed, they will try to monitor on any potential breakout for this line. So I give you all of the example. You can see that all of the candlestick are keep moving. And then scalping member will normally wait until they break above the MA line, the red color. Uh, let me change to a nicer color and show you. Okay, so you can notice that it's rebound. And then you can notice once they break above this MA line, they will expecting it, it will reach another MA line. So it's a short term break above then the long term. So this is a resistance level for the MA line. This is a, sorry, this is a resistance level. And then this is a previous resistance level. Once spread out, a lot of investors will decide uh, to buy it. So MA line is one of the good uh, short-term trading strategy. They wait for breakout about above the line, then you long, then they, they long. And then after they hit the, another line here, they decide to short. So short until this line, they, they just TP and then wait until any potential breakout. So after they break out again, then they short again until the support level. So you can normally use the MA line to decide what to do by yourself. And then you can also combine with the analysis and go. So, uh, sorry, the resistance level as well as the support level. So you can notice that this is a very good breakout. But why is a good entry point is you can try to draw a small support level around here, which is here 20,370, so around this region. So when you reach this region, right, you can notice that if they continue to consolidate, maybe it's a good consideration that you can put long it because this is a strong support line and then this is a nice breakout. So a breakout, we retrace and retest back on this support line as well as the MA line. Some of the traders might think it's a very good opportunity for them uh, to be focused on it. Okay, so you can try to use the MA line to treat it as a support level as well as the resistance level. So here is another example. So they break out above the MA line, then when you reach here, they be careful. That's why they retrace a bit. But after they break above again, then they continue going up. So when, if this candlestick continue to maintain above this line, these two line, then maybe you can treat this as a support level. Any chances that this, the candlestick break below the support level or the MA line here, higher chance that it will continue to go down. So of course, you can also just use a, a resistance and support level, just draw a line, but normally scalping, they use up a lot of strategy. They will try to combine a lot, it's like MA line together, MACD, they will use the support and resistance level. They try to use, one support line there might be not enough because if scalping that involve a lot of market movement, market volatilities. So you can try to combine with multiple indicators along uh, with the support and resistance line. Okay, so you can notice that uh so they break above already. You can wait and any chances that they break below again the line, then you short. Short until where maybe around the MA line, the, the short term MA line around here. So one is ratio, you just close the positions, then you wait any potential breakout below. So after from here, they break below this line, they continue to maintain below, then overall trends already change and continue to drop further. Uh, normally, trader will just combine these two as a stopping uh, support resistance line and MMA line to decide uh, when you reach the bottom, when you reach here, and they wait for any potential breakout. So when they reach here, which is the highest line, then maybe the TP or they wait another. You just treat it as a, another new uh, support and resistance level is very, very good now. So normally you just combine these two, uh, support resistance. But the bad thing is, if the overall trends is continue downwards like that, you can notice that continue going down and going down. If you want to do trades between this region, right? Normally they will buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here. But if overall trends are continue going down, you're not able to do the trades. So scalping strategy might not be very, very good if overall long-term trend is going down. So it's advisable for you to combine with multiple trading strategy. As for now, I don't think that scalping is a very, very good trading strategy because you can give you one of the example is you can notice that this is hash for charts for the door. Overall, it's really going to going up. So if you use the scalping trading strategy, it might be not very clear and compared to better uh, maybe day trading strategy. 
scalping is more suitable when uh, the market trends they don't move a lot. Then you just focus on long and the support, short the resistance level. And then if the support line like that is not enough, then you can try to combine with the main line. All right. So I explain again how you set the main line. So you can just click insert. Maybe I remove all. Then I set. And I will set it for you. Indicator. So you can see there is an indicator. Yeah. Two MA line. I delete. I delete. So no more line. All right. So you can click here. Insert. Indicator. And then moving average. So remember, one, you put a longer term period, which is a long term line, then you set your favorite color, but you need to remember this is a long term line. So you click it. So you can see that there is a line, which means that the 60 average prices of the candlestick, the previous candlestick, they will calculate the average price, then form a green line like that. And then another is short term. So you just set 20, and then you change your favorite color, which is the red. So MA line have been formed, and you can trade within this consolidated zone. It's a very good. But of course, if you want to apply MA line to a longer term trades, right? Then maybe you can use it as a trend reversal instead of scalping trading strategy. So for example, why is trend reversal is when this short term line cross above the long term line, like here. Red is the short term line, so when you're going up, down, but once they cross above, means there is a trend reversal might be going up. But this is more applicable for maybe longer term trades. 5 minute is better because you just trade with 5 minute charts. So it's very, very fast for you to do buy or sell. So if you do the 5 minute charts, then you can trade a mainline as a support and resistance level. So for example, break below the support level, going down until here, this a mainline, then you consider long again. So for example here, but now this gap is too near already. Let me see any good example that we can be focused on. Uh, all right, so maybe Nasdaq, as for now, maybe Nasdaq is one of the good example. You can see that this is the M5 chart, and then maybe it's already successfully break above the MA line. So we're expecting it, it might be continuing going up, down, or going up, maybe around until this region, another MA line. So a lot of scalpel might be long now, and then they might be TP around this region. But of course, you can combine with the, this is a five mini chart, can you remember? Combine with the resistance level around here. So if they're really going up, we might be according to the charts. We might be going up a few here, which is nicely touch the MA line long term line as a resistance, and then it will touch the real resistance level around here. So you can trace like that. But of course, there are a lot of bad examples also. You can notice that this is the risk of stopping. So you want to treat like that, right? You can see that now you expect it break, it might be going up, but you can see that it failed and then it starts to drop back. So this is all the bad example. This is what we call the tech breakout. That's why sometimes risk management is very important. We need to consider stop loss uh, trading strategy. La. So now assume it might be very good for it to go up, but always prepare yourself for bad scenario that happens. So your stop loss is very easy to set. You can just set below this MA line, the red color MA line, the short term MA line around here. So this is how you do the scalping and very stressed. You need to keep monitoring the charts, especially this is five minute charts. Five minute charts means all of these candlesticks, right? They will close in five minutes. And compared with cash flow, four hour close is one candlestick. So this is a difference. Very stressful. But uh full-time trader can consider on it because they have nothing to do. They might be just keep monitoring on the charts. Look for a great trading opportunity. But if you have your proper job, not a full-time trader, and then you don't want to waste your F too much effort like just looking at the charts every day. 24 hours you keep monitor on the charts is very, very higher things. If you want to rest a bit, then you can change your trading strategy and then scalping might not be suitable for you. All right. So advantages of scalping is very fast pace of trading, very excited. You might get a profit very fast, but of course lose also very fast. And then it's very excited uh, trading strategy. And then high volatility is will keep moving because you are monitoring five minute charts, especially before the data release, the charts, the data will be moving, keep going up, going down, going up, going down. It's a very excited thing. But the bad thing is uh, risk exposure is high. And then for scalping, normally they trade with around 10 pips or five pips or 20 pips that close their positions already. So they keep open positions, close positions, which is linked to uh, disadvantages of the high transactions cost. 
Just a kind of reminder, no matter you do buy or you do sell, there will be a brokerage fee or the spread fee. So you will lose some of your money because you need to pay back the broker fee. All right. Well, it's what we call the spread charges. So if you keep doing buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, you really could be expecting a very high transaction cost. And then it will be very, very stressful if you keep keep monitoring all the charts. It's like you keep playing around the global traders every day, every minute. It's very, very tiring things. So it can be very stressful and then might be time consuming. You don't have your time or your proper job. You don't have your time for your family. You just focus on the charts. If you are really very keen in the trading world, maybe you can consider it. But just a kind of reminder, you need to make sure you don't get addicted to it. And please spend more time with your family instead of keep looking at the charts. Uh, especially for new traders, they get excited and forget everything. So this is a kind of reminder. And then one of the disadvantages of scalping is it will cause people keep looking at the charts. All right. So if you think this is a too stressful for you, and maybe we will suggest another trading strategy, which is, which, which is the day trading strategy. Day trading strategy should be simple. Uh, one day trading, like you open, and before you sleep, you close. So if you only focus on day trading strategy, you don't have, you don't need to pay the swap fee. Swap fee is one of the overnight costs. So for example, if you hold certain products overnight, you need to pay uh, for the costs. But in traditional strategy, is a good thing is no swap fee. You close before the day end. All right. And then it's quite simple. Normally, people will just use H4 or H1. Now, compared with five minute charts, you need to monitor every five minutes on what is the candlestick pattern. Day trading let you have a more free time. Like you can just focus on H4 and H1. And then day trading strategy should be simple. Normally, you can just focus on the analysis technical like support and resistance level should be very very good enough already so let me show you some of the example like a nice breakout i think gold is one of the good considerations but uh let me see any better example yeah okay so usdjpi is currently one of the good example for day trading strategy so normally traders right they will just do what just do support, draw a support and resistance level. Day trading will normally use H1 or H4. After they draw the support level, right, you can notice that they break up below the support level, they consider shots. Next target in there, reach another support level, 155.50. But the good thing compared to scalping, right, this is H4 candlestick. For one candlestick to close, H4 means that for this one candlestick to close, it requires you up to four hours. So you can chill. You don't have to like, for five minutes, we need to look on the candlestick pattern of what's going to happen next. So it's advisable for you to use H4 or H1 and then monitor on it whether any chances for you to break below the support level or the resistance level. So it's quite simple. And normally you can just trade on the news. News means that maybe before the economic data to be released, uh, then you prepare for it and then you trade on it and you close it. So, for example, previously we do have the non farm payroll, the gold experience a significant movement. Some of the intraday traders will like to trade it, and be after the data release, they try to focus on the movement, then they close it on the day instead of just waiting for a few days. Then normally we'll just use one big fundamental to trade on it. For example, now it's regarding on the US elections. Intra trader will likely to focus on gold market on Monday previously because uh, we do know that we do have the rising political tensions in the United States. Uh, got people assassinates try to shut Donald Trump down, which lead up to a rising uh geopolitical tensions in the United States. The risk appetites in the market remain weak. Something Western might shift their portfolio towards gold. But intra trader will be very, very careful on it. After they the news come out on Saturday, they will try to trade on Monday. So after Monday, they don't know what's going to happen on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So they might decide to close their positions. Just one day, trade with one big fundamental and close it. So this is what we call the intraday trading strategy. Just use one big fundamental to focus on it. Okay, so this is how uh, intraday is going to do. A very clear uh, entry and stop loss point. So one of the good advantages for day trading strategy is it's allowed traders to find opportunities in a very short term uh, price movement and be very profitable quickly and have a potential to generate income on a daily basis and they can use leverage to amplify the positions. 
and you know that CIP industry, we do have a lot of high leverage trading strategy. It's a good thing as well as a bad thing. A good thing is you can use small money to end big amount. The bad thing is you are going to keep stopping up. Uh, I, I believe you guys know why it's stopping up. If not, you are really a legend in the trading journey. So this is the good and bad thing for the uh, trading CIP industry. All right. But you really need to be careful. Because normally day trading will use a big leverage because they don't have patience to wait like for example one week or one month long. They just wait for another one day, one week, uh, one day. Then they close their positions. Very impatient. They just try on one big fundamental news. But the good thing is, it might be not very complicated you because just focus on one big fundamental instead of focus on multiple fundamental because you want to do a very longer term trade can be easier. So of course, Long term, uh, you just do your research like maybe one day, then you can just hold and close your eyes, don't have to keep looking at the charts anymore. It's also another good thing that you can uh make your time more leisure. All right, so I assume if you are not a full time trader, but maybe you are a part time trader, uh, intraday trading strategy is recommended. You just wake up in the morning, focus on the news, look at what's going on in the market. Then you just focus on support and resistance level, and you start to do your trades. So part time trader can consider on it, lah. All right, and then next thing, uh, swing trading like part time jobs. Uh, they are working now instead of keep trades. One those uh people that who, who have their own job, then maybe we can suggest a swing trading. Uh, for you guys, swing trading is quite simple. They will try to combine fundamental and technical. Uh, fundamental means uh what's going on, what's going on in the markets, and what is the big storyline in the markets. And then in this week, what we need to be careful on it, and just a kind of reminder in this week, we, even though we don't have a lot of high impact economics data, but of course, we need to monitor on a few things. A few things like what? Uh, of course, you're going to miss a few things like uh, initial draws scan is one of the very, very important things that uh, investor need to be focused on next week. Maybe we do have the Federal Reserve uh, monetary policy decisions. And then we can also expect there will be a rising market volatility in the markets because of the US elections. And then we can be expecting multiple central banks is going to give a speech later this week. So swing trading strategy is like when we wake up on Monday, then we try to understand what's going to happen in the whole week. Then we try to uh, strategize our trading strategy. For example, we already know that US election is around the corner. So on Monday, we woke up, we try to focus on the gold markets. And you can notice that gold is very going to going up aggressively because there are multiple fundamental that are supporting it instead of just one big fundamental. Multiple fundamental means that you can notice the Federal Reserve member just mentions they want to cut the interest rates, which caused the dollar going down aggressively recently. So when dollar going down aggressively, gold price going up. So another big fundamental is regarding on what the U.S. presidential elections continue to supporting on it supports the safe haven goal going up because there is a high risk uh, environment in the U.S. right now. That's why investors try to shift their portfolio towards the gold markets, the big two big fundamental. But after these elections, uh, incidents and what's next? Uh, maybe investors need to focus on the U.S. economic data to make sure that the upcoming U.S. economic data. It's not as good as expected. Then dollar might going down further. Then maybe they can consider long again the gold markets. So you have a big planning since Monday until Friday. And then you try to monitor on this on the whole week whether the US is going to give a very good economic data, economic result or not. So you try to monitor the data. Then you try to change your trend strategy accordingly. But not just buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell every day. You prepare on it. And then you already know that fundamental for gold might be positive in this week. Then you can more focus on the long positions. Maybe you can try to TP when you reach certain level and you wait until they drop back, retrace, healthy retracement until the support level. Then you long again. Then your stop loss can just put maybe below the support level. So you can try to understand one big trend. And then try to have a very good uh, entry point. But just a kind of reminder, because you are focused on whole week things and then things might be changed. For example, Monday, I already assumed that the US elections will cost gold going up. The Fed member will provide a dovish tone, uh, say that they might cut the interest rates. US economy data might not performing well. 
But sometimes, even Monday, I predicted this, but Wednesday, Fed, Fed Reserve Jerome Powell come out and provide another statement. Then market change. And US suddenly released a much better than expected economic data. Market change again. So your trading strategy need to be changed. So even though swing trades good, but it doesn't mean that what you prepare on Monday will same that what's going on on maybe Wednesday on Thursday. So please, uh, you still need to update yourself every day, but maybe not keep looking at the charts. It's more focused on look at the news and see what's going on. So it's a very good and very chill thing. Instead of like you use five minutes, you keep, keep buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, but you just focus on H4. Accordingly, like for example, H4, right? If you do the same trade, right? They going up and then they going down. Then you notice that this is a very strong support level already. First time you don't, you're afraid to enter, but second time they test again. And then you notice that recently we have the news, the rising job political tension news, the risk appetite in the market remain weak. Uh, according to your Monday analysis, maybe this is a good entry point. Then you decide to long it long until the resistance level that reach you TP, you close, then you wait again, break out again, then you consider again. So like you can focus more on long positions. So just find your good entry point. But things change, then you must, you need to change. That's why stop loss is important also. All right. This is a swing trading strategy. The good thing is less stress. You are not going to buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell every day. Not every day, sorry. Every hour, every minute. Lower transactions cost because you are not going to buy, sell, buy, sell. Spreads, charge will be lower. So better risk management, you can control emotions. But just a kindly reminder, yeah, scalping and swing trade is different. In terms of scalping, right? Uh, scalping, Maybe you will do your positions bigger. But in terms of swing trade, right, it's better for you to do a smaller position. So as I normally scalping, you do one lot. But swing trade, maybe you can consider 0 0.05 lot because you are trying to give get a very huge gap. For example, from here to here is already 2,000 points. What if they drop back another 2,000 points? It's a very huge, uh, it's a very huge gap. So when you get a very huge gap, Highly not recommended for you to full margin and do the trades here. Yeah? Highly not recommended. So if you do scalping, you do full margin, maybe you can consider on it because you are trade a very uh, short-term movement only. But in terms of swing trade, it's completely different. You are trying to get a big gap. Okay, Big gap means bigger movement. Bigger movement means what? Bigger movement means higher volatilities. Of course, your trades need to do a smaller trade. So normally scalping, you use one lot, but swing trades, maybe 0 0.01 lot, 0 0.01, maybe less, maybe 0 0.05 or 0 0.1. Try to lower down it. Don't try to apply all same trading strategy and then you all full margin. It's highly not recommended. I really suggest you to don't do it. So swing trades, longer term trades, you worry, you still cannot concentrate on your work then highly advisable for you to do a smaller lot of positions that you prepare in. Okay, so this is how you need to focus on swing trades. So the purpose of swing trades is they want to reduce your trading emotions. Uh, of course, if you want to reduce your trading emotions, means you need to do the positions that are really suitable to you. It's instead of like you want to get rich quick, then you do a very short positions, then these positions is going to affect your mood. You are not going to focus your work, your family, then highly not recommend that why you want to consider to do it like that. So if you think your trades already affect your up mood upside down, then maybe you can try to lower down your trading positions, longer your trading uh, horizons, investment horizon. For example, you do a smaller lot, then you focus on maybe H4 or day one charts. So of course, you don't Think that uh if we try to shift from scalping to a stay trading or, or maybe swing trade is not good. It's normally it's, it's good also because we are trying to get a bigger bigger gap between the support and system level. Like scalping, we catch uh maybe 10 to 20 pips, but it's different when we use swing trades, we are trying to get hundreds of pips, 200 pips, 300 pips. So it's completely different. But when you get 200, 300 pips, right? Uh, you don't do your positions too big because you can go up 200. Uh, 300 pips, but you can also go down. Uh, you need to think more on the worst case scenario. Also. So you fully prepare on it. Try to find your suitable loss size in trading uh, and you trade on it. Okay. 
So the bad thing is longer exposure in the market. Sometimes if you just ignore it, only things happen you ignore because you, you think you are a long-term trader. But if the market storyline already changed, fundamental already changed, you don't want to adapt to it, maybe you will be suffer. So sometimes longer exposure might be higher risk also. And then we do have the overnight risk. So when you do the trades overnight, you go and sleep, you don't know what's going on in the night time. Then next day you wake up, the capital might be gone. So in order to prevent this, maybe you can consider close your order before you sleep. Or you do a smaller position and then you go to sleep. Then you can sleep well. All right. And then it's also required to have a significant understanding of the market. And luckily as a pure prime, we do provide daily market analysis news for you guys every day. So you can try to adapt on it. We will give you guys like weekly analysis, daily analysis, or very short term analysis. And then we also provide for dial webinar for you guys, hoping you to help you have a very, very good understanding in the markets. And then maybe one day it's better for you to apply the swing trading strategy. Like try to apply what's going on in the storyline in the market and then do the trades. So swing trading strategy, you need to understand multiple things. Because you prepare on Monday, right? Then on whole week, you need to understand what's going on, predict it, and then you enter the trades. But Normally, PU Prime like us will normally prepare an analysis reports to let you guys understand what will be going on on two days, on tomorrow, like that. All right, so please follow us more. Uh, especially you can also visit our website and Telegram group. Position trading is a longer term or most longer term trading strategy already. So, for example, maybe like you hold your positions for month long. The good thing is, uh, one of the good uh, I would say it's a very good position trading example right now is USD JPY lah. So of course a lot of people might might be suffering previously because UJ actually going up. Even though the Bank of Japan previously keep mentions they want to intervene their currency, which will cause Japanese yen going up, USD JPY going down, the previous one, but they keep ignoring it. But some of the position trader will keep short it because they expect the Bank of Japan they say they want to intervene their currency. Intervening currency means that they will sell dollar, they will buy Japanese yen to protect the Japanese yen currency because Japanese yen currency are going to drop aggressively towards record low. That's why they are assuming the Japan's central bank would likely to do what? They decide to intervene the currency, which means buy back the Japanese yen, protect it. That's why uh, the central bank buy Japanese yen. Japanese yen might be going up, USD JPY might be going down, right? So they are keep expecting it, they're predicting it. That's why, according to position trading, they try to shop USD JPY very long, since very long ago. But luckily, recently, we do have noticed there is a big uh, movement for Japanese yen. So for those who are keep short positions on USD JPY because they expect uh, monetary policy intervention, uh, they might be benefiting from it. So normally, position trading is you try to utilize one big news that's going to happen in the markets, and then you ignore all the small news. For example, small news like uh, US economist data released this week, what's going on or what, no. They try to expect a very, very huge news. For example, gold is one of the examples. So even though uh, previously, gold keep going up, going down, going up, going down, right? But because of several traders are expecting the Fed might be cut the interest rates, and they already know that uh, US election is going to trigger the huge market volatilities. Everything is already predicted. Then they try to do a very, uh, they try, try to do a positions trading. They try to put a lot of initial capital, then do a very small trade. And then with the big storyline that's going to happen in 2024, which is cut interest rates, as well as uh, federal, uh, US presidential elections, these two things, uh, they just utilize it. Then they try with four months since January, they trade until now. Uh, assume they just ignore all of the small news, then they might be benefiting on it like, because just big two news already enough for them to earn their money. Instead of they just uh, wait for the data, they monitor on the data, trade on weekly basis, they try to just keep popping up, popping up, protect their capital, and then just try to catch the two big news, which is this uh, elections as well as break cut. So it's a good thing also, but of course, it's a good thing when you reach la, and you are not going to affect by daily movement. Like today, I lose hundred dollar. Tomorrow, I lose another two hundred dollar. But I expect in two three months, I might be gaining back because of this two big news. 
uh, you need to have a very, very strong psychological control. And of course, you need to have a very big capital. Some return investors might not able to handle it because you can notice that in case for you to want to know the gold price might be going up, you might be suffering the huge roller coaster on here. Going up, going down, going up, going down, going up, going down. You don't see this is a small gap, yeah? As a return investor, as me, I think it's a very huge because you can see that here going up, going down is already how much? Thousand of the pips value already. So thousand of the pips, if you do one lot, uh, 15,000 K USD is gone. Uh, you, you imagine that kind of emotions. So if you are very rich, then you can tank. But some of us, like a return investor, you might not handle this kind of psychological issue. Two ways. One way is, of course, you open your positions with lower lot size, uh, your suitable, suitable one. Or you don't try to do the position trading uh, because uh, maybe it's better for you to consider maybe swing trades, intra trades is better instead of position trading. Position trading is normally like those people already retire, they don't, they have a lot of money, they invest on multiple different asset classes, they want to try with like CFD uh, industry, they want to try some money with gold. And then this money, they're able to lose all and they're okay. Like, they are not going to affect by the market. Ah, then they maybe they will try to consider position trading. They just click long. Then they close their eyes and then wait for two big incidents going to happen. Ah, another good suggestion for position trading, right, is Nasdaq. Nasdaq, Dow Jones is also another big news. Imagine Nasdaq previously. Uh, since January, I think you guys already received the news regarding on the fact it's going to cut the interest rates. The chat GPT is going to launch. The AI hype in the US is very, very good. And then this is all the good news. Okay, 2024, two big news only. One is presidential, sorry, three, I think three to four big news. One is US presidential elections. Second is rate cuts. The third one is artificial intelligence. I believe some of you already know AI is coming in 2023, December. So this is two big news. So AI is coming, rate cuts, the Fed is going to Paris. All good news. The big news one is going to affect the Nasdaq. So on January, a lot of people might be thinking Nasdaq is good. They decide to enter the market by position trading. They hold it for a few months, waiting for the big things going to happen. They ignore all the small data like no farm payroll, CPI, PPI, the Federal Reserve Member Statement. They all ignore. They just focus on two big news. They believe AI is great and then AI is coming. So they will just focus on it. AI is great. What industry is going to affect on it? Of course, that company. So they will focus on their stack. They do the low positions. They close their eyes. And then they also know that Fed is going to cut interest rate. They close their eyes again. Then their stack going up and going up and going up. It's still very easy for us to say that. Like imagine if you are returning investor, yeah? The movement going up, going down, going up, going down. And then imagine if you are doing some full margin trades, you are going to burst your account easily. So I would say that position trading is great for some some uh investor, but for return investor might be not recommended unless you're able to open a small positions. Ah, then you need to know that oh small positions means profit will be very slow, losers will cost uh, slow slower. So if you can know you can tank uh, the the uh, long term time horizon, investment horizon, then maybe position trading is suitable. But uh, a lot of European investors, why they want to enter the safety industry to trace because of the leverage. So they don't want to slow. Some of them, uh, so it's a good thing or the bad thing. Uh. So position trading is very good. Uh, assume you are a very rich guy, then you can close your eyes and ignore all the small, small movement. And uh, then you can benefit on it. It's a really true, true story. So just focus. Actually, if you don't want buy, sell, buy, sell, right? You just focus on these two stories. You're already good enough. Already go as far as that stack. And then even the crude oil, we don't say now go out, go down, go out, go down. We just assume that previously crude oil, right? Imagine during COVID periods, crude oil is actually going down aggressively. Then if they expect the COVID period is going to recover, they just use one big fundamental. They are going to benefit a lot. But the, the journey is tough. Huh? Imagine you are a return investor. Going up, going down every day, then next day going up again, you cannot handle it. So it's not recommended for for small capital investor. So normally for position trading, they will cash a weekly or money trades. They focus on big news, big industry news that's going to affect the movement. The advantage is lower emotion, distress. They don't care their money. That's why they can just leave it. Leave it like that. Like they just buy, then you just close your eyes. 
and then you don't stress, you reduce your admin pressure. Uh, normally, when you're free after one month, you check your account, okay, you lose some of the money, then you still shield, and the next month you check again, uh, no trading pressure. Uh, very easy to say instead of do it, but if you read one day, if you are getting too rich and then you don't care about the money, then maybe you can experience other things. So go only focus on the final target, capture the big trends and not the short term losses. So position trading is also one uh one of the good considerations. Uh, so you don't have to monitor on the charts. Just prepare yourself on Monday or like what, what is the big news in the markets. Okay. So the next thing as far as the final trading strategy is divergent. Divergent is like mostly on technical fronts, but I think it's quite a uh, useful so for some of the traders. So divergent is a signal that indicates difference in the directions between price as well as MACD. And then we do have two divergence, bullish divergent as well as bearish divergent. Explain in a simple way. Positive divergent or bullish divergence happens when the candlestick is downward trends. But the MACD is going up. So when these things happen, it suggests that trend reversal are incoming. So things like explain that might be confused. Let me show you some of the real example. So you can notice here the overall candlestick is downward trend. And then MACD here is upward trend. So any chances that this MACD try to turn curve and going up, then it might be going up. So normally divergent will consider H4 or day one should be more suitable instead of like H1. Uh, or maybe five minutes is not 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 that accurate in my opinion. So H1 is good uh, if there is a divergent. So remember candlestick downward trends, you can draw a line, but MACD you draw it and you can notice this is our trends, then it's a very good potential trend reversal. So negative divergent is when the candlestick is upward trends but MACD is downward trend, which means that it might be going down. One of the examples is like this. Candlestick here going up. And then you're not sure why it's a good good timing to sell, right? Because keep taking record high, then you focus on MACD law. MACD, this line is downward. The previous high is higher than the current high. Uh, downward trend line. This is our trend line. Then once this MACD turn curve, then you can short. Then you can notice that you can be benefiting from it. It's quite simple, but it's not that easy to find. Uh. So you need to wait for the opportunities uh, for the MACD. To be formed. All right. So this is our final one. Actually. And after today's sessions, right? Uh, there, there is actually no one what we call the best trading strategy in the world. For example, if you are rich, then maybe position trading is one of the consideration. But if you don't want to like you you love the excitement, then uh scalping is one of the good considerations. And then if you those who really like to analyze market news, you like to watch news, you have some time, then maybe day trading and swing trades is one of the good considerations. But uh key advice from me is like if you do a longer term horizons investment compared to scalping like short term trading, uh highly important thing is regarding on your opening positions. The longer trades you want to do the long term right. It's better for you to open the smaller positions compared to short term. That's why you can more chill and really going to do your thing. If not, you use a small capital, you do a very, very big loss size, then you assume you are do a you are you are a long-term trader. No, yeah. Uh every movement your mood will swing. So no. If you are trying to become a very long-term trader like swing trading, uh, then try to lower down your the trading positions that make it more comfortable to you lah. because swing trade is you try to catch hundreds of pips scalping you try to catch 10 to 20 pips so the difference is huge so you need to remember and then all of this trading strategy i think uh why is it important is because it's different for everyone is because all of these different kind of trading strategy will link towards your human psychology your own emotions so if you really cannot control emotions, then you don't focus on scalping because you can trade whole day, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and at the end of the day, you lose everything. If you can't control emotions, then maybe swing trade. Position trading is good. Then you try to do a smaller position. Stuff. But if you want like play play a game, nothing to do, and then scalping is a very good uh, trading strategy. Every five minutes, you do your buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, excited. But don't over trade, stuff. don't act it Right? I think this is all the... Uh, for the slides 
express the advice uh, for me. I think we do have, still have five to 10 minutes. Q&A sessions, any questions that you guys want to ask me? If no questions, then I think we are going to end here. We hope that is really going to help you. We saw a lot of support uh, from you guys. Somebody asked which strategy you all like. Uh, yeah. Actually, there is no one right or wrong answer. Like everyone is really different. Of course, winning everyone loves the winning strategy. But in order for us to win, I think we need to try to control our emotions first. Uh, because if not, like you win, you're happy, then you do a bigger trade. Uh, for example, you, you win from day trading, then you assume you are very good. Then you try to scalping and do a bigger position. So it's quite, quite suffering. So I would say... Uh, we do have multiple trading strategy. Try to find a suitable strategy that can uh, align with your emotions. All right. I think if no questions, then I think we are going to end our sessions now. And thank you everyone for the time. And we really hope that uh, we're able to help you enhance. And we were able to enhance your trading strategy together. All right. So that's all for today. Thank you everyone for your time. And thank you so much for all of your supports. Thank you.